G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you and I can't tell you how excited I am to reveal this lens today. This is a lens that so many people have been waiting for. It's been on the roadmap a very long time and it's not even the lens that we thought that it was. Later on in this video, we're gonna compare what this lens looks like and feels like to the 200 to 500. Right here, the unboxing and first look of the 180 to 600 Z mount lens. Alrighty, well here it is. I am so excited, wow. Straight away, it feels great. A good sense of weight. It has a bit of heft about it, for sure. There's no doubt about it. And it's around two kilos in weight. It's about 10% lighter than the 200 to 500, give or take. But of course, that's not including the F to Z adapter. Include that and you might be up to 15% or even 20% of a difference. Let's take a look at that front element. There it is right there. It's a 95 millimeter filter thread. And of course, this is a VR lens. And I can tell you straight away, it feels well built. We are using a lot of composites, but you've got to do that stuff to keep these lenses light. And that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants lenses to stay light. We've got a really good feeling, robust tripod collar. Here we have the auto focus to manual focus switch, along with the range switch in focal. So full, you can have the full throw of the focus or you can just have it focusing no closer than six meters. So that's awesome if you're just shooting things that are a long way away and you don't want the lens to go through its full travel. We have this ring here which can be programmed to do all sorts of things. Default, it will be a focus ring. Hello, hello! It's an all internal zoom. And that makes it straight away really different from the original 200 to 500. To me, that's quite a big deal because that really changes the equation around weather sealing. Okay, that's a big step. This is a 180 to 600. So this is expanding on the previous version of this lens, the 200 to 500. It's giving us an extra 20 mil at the wide end and it's giving us an extra 100 mil, which is a 20% increase in reach at the long end. I really think it's a super duper focal range. And of course, if we think about the 70 to 180 that is also being released today, then this is coupled perfectly with the 70 to 180 and then the 180 to 600. Now we have a little bit of precipitation going here at the moment, but that's okay. We're shooting on Z9s and Z8s and we've got Nikon lenses. I have no problem about it raining a little bit. And this lens is designed to be out in the field, along with all of this other equipment. So it's completely all good. Now let's talk about the fact that this is 600 mils on the long end. And if you take it to APS-C or DX mode, this takes you out to 900 mils. And if you're on your Z7, Z7 II, Z8 or Z9, you're still getting 20 megapixels, just shy of 20 megapixels at 900 mils. This lens can take teleconverters, which again, just gives you unbelievable reach. 900 with the two times goes out to 1,800 millimeters of reach at 20 megapixels on those four cameras that we just talked about. This to me is the perfect companion for the Z8 or the Z9. And of course, it'll work exceptionally well from the Z30 all the way through to the Z7 II and all those in between. I don't think it's any coincidence that the Z8 was released just a few weeks ago. And so we have one here right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this little beauty on the Z8. Now I've got the Ninja here just to just to make things as unwieldy as possible but it's also just to show and now I remember I've never used this lens it's to show how fast the focus is because you know this is for action and wildlife. Fast is pretty important isn't it? All right here we are we're on feels good as I said it's around two kilos. It's not a lightweight lens but then it is 600 mils. It is 900 mils in APS-C and it is with your teleconverters out at almost 2,000 mils. A ridiculously powerful lens. All right, let's turn it on for the first time. We're gonna plug in 
the Ninja, and we're gonna get very first reactions here of how this works. We're gonna record it. It's pretty exciting to do this for the first time. Okay, the Ninja is coming on. Feels great. I mean, obviously the Ninja adds a bit of extra weight. This whole package is probably in excess of four kilos with the Ninja and its battery. All right, here we go. Focus for the first time. I'm going to single point so I can just quickly test it out. And we are going to roll on the Ninja so you can see what I can see. All right, here we go. If we go between close grass and fence behind, that is very fast. You'll be able to see that on the Ninja. That's absolutely fantastic. Very good. And let's go to close focus. And I'm now focusing, yeah. And look, you can see, look at that. I am focusing on something that's about two meters, six feet away. And how about that st stabilization? That's 600 mils, that's very impressive. All right, to go from very close, so something like 15 feet, not even, maybe 12 feet out to 50 feet, that is snappy. It was just a bird, where did it go? <laughs> I just want to freeze here for a moment and mention that this lens uses STM motors, which are super quiet, and I did not hear them at all. Excellent for video and excellent for wildlife. It's up in the tree over there. Let me turn on bird detect everybody, see if I can't catch myself a bird. But you know, why not? We are in a park, pretending to be a forest, because <laughs> we don't have time to do anything else. Well, there's a dog. There's a dog a very long way away. That is amazing. So that dog is probably 250 meters away. I'm very impressed. And you can see the tracking on the Ninja. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're at 600 mil, we're at 6.3, 1 3 20th of a second handheld. And in the middle of our shooting, we had some birds, these beautiful birds appeared. And here we are shooting at 600 mil with the 2.3 times crop that you get in 4K high speed. Absolutely unbelievable result, simply handheld. And well, here you have it here. This footage is shot at 8K. And what I do here is I punch in to 200% because we're on a 4K timeline. You can do that without losing any quality at all. I didn't finish going through the buttons. There are function buttons here on the front, which are programmable. And other than that, that's all we have here. We obviously have the collar, which can be released here and easily rotated very easily rotated like that's super easy super fast i'm liking what i'm seeing and feeling here i i didn't realize that this lens was going to be all internal and i think let me just unplug that the fact the original 200 to 500 when you zoom it extrudes this lens does not change its length and it means it's never prone to damage or the elements and I think that's a massive change for this lens and the fact that it's going to be used in the field. This is an in the field lens. You do not use this indoors very much. Two reasons, it needs light and well, it starts at almost 200 mils. That, that's a major achievement from my perspective. Let's just shoot a little bit of video. And what we can see here on the Atomos Ninja 5 is even in the dark under a tree how well the Z8 is picking up the bird, seeing the eye, and if it loses the eye it finds the body. But that's a pretty exciting result in these sort of conditions from my perspective. The more it feels confident where the eye is, the smaller the box gets and it becomes really small around the eye. Now, none of these systems are ever perfect, but yeah, this is great. All right, well, for a city slicker, that's about as close to birding as I'm gonna get right now. I'm impressed. All right, let's take a look at this lens and the 200 to 500. Here in my right hand is the 200 to 500, and here in my left hand is the 180 to 600. 
Now we can see with the F to Z adapter, which is how any Z user would have to use this lens, these lenses are almost exactly the same size. Weight-wise, it's clearly this one I can clearly feel is actually quite a lot heavier. This was the most important thing that I wanted to talk about. So to show you again, zooming, here's zooming, zooming, all internal, hmm. extending. Now that is a significant difference when it comes to strength of the lens, vulnerability of the lens, and weather sealing of the lens. If it's all internal, well, it's all internal. That is a massive change from my perspective. And just in case you were wondering, to go from zoom range of 180 to 600 mil, it is only a 70 degree turn of the zoom ring. And when it comes to weather sealing, this is dust and drip resistant. If you put the two of them side by side, I won't put this lens down like this because it's not designed to do that, but you can see there is a significant difference in size when it's fully extended. The fact to me that the new lens is all internal, that alone is enough of a difference. That alone. Especially for my sort of usage. When I'm shooting, I'm always shooting in some sort of conditions, whether it's rain or sand or snow or dust. This is awesome. The starting price for this lens will be 2,999 Australian dollars. This lens is gonna sell like gangbusters and now that I've played with it, now that I've had it in my hand, now that I can see that it's all a single unibody design, there are no extending elements. For those that own the 200 to 500, the filter size is the same, so that's pretty damn awesome that you can just swap it over. Probably one difference that some people will bring up is that this lens is 5.6 through the range and this is 5.6 to 6.3. Sure, that is just a one third difference in light gathering capability and I think that's something that really is not worth worrying about with all of the other advantages that you get with this lens. And again, I can't reiterate how excited I am the fact that it is an all internal mechanism. This was just an unboxing and first look video. I will take this lens out into the field, even more so than we're out in a field right now, and we will do some testing and I will really put it through its paces. All right, and here we have the lens hood. Pretty standard for Nikon these days, this style of lens hood. Some people say they're a little bit too lightweight. I'm not sure about that. For all we know, this is full of carbon fiber nanotubes and it's way tougher than the lens hoods that feel thicker. They may well feel thicker, but they might actually be weaker. And what I like about these things is they have more flex. They clearly, they, they clearly flex more and that is actually a bigger protection for your lens. Here it is, the 180-600 to 5.6-6.3 VR from Nikon. So many people are going to be excited about it. Feels good, build is good, yeah. All right, next video coming soon, we'll be testing it in the field. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about this lens, and I'm gonna put up a poll. Are you gonna get the 180 to 600, or are you gonna get something else? Link below. All right, it's been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right, bye for now. Chanel.